Open the black pill board package and solder the 4 pin ST Link connector to the black pill board first. It will be easier to do now rather than later when the large yellow pin strips are in the way. I make a habit of only soldering one pin on first, then inspect that everything is lined up right and flush with the board. Now that the ST link pins are soldered on, it's time to solder on the two long yellow strips of pins on. Place the strips on the bottom, short pins into the board, long pins sticking out. I find it easiest to dry mount the pins and board onto the breadboard so it can hold the parts in place while soldering. Again, make sure the pins are flush against the board prior to soldering. I like to start at the corners. Stopping to check everything is still flush before soldering the rest of the pins. Finally, solder the remaining pins. After soldering, you may want to clean off the rosin left behind with some acetone followed by an alcohol rinse to tidy things up. The black pill board is now ready for use. Now let's build the circuit. I suggest if you're using a ST-Link dongle that you place the black pill board on the breadboard with the USB port to the right and the ST-Link connectors to the left. Then place the DAC module to the right side of the black pill board so we can run wires from the black pill's A4 through A7 pins directly over to the DAC's BCK, DIN, and LCK pins. Now take the 6N137 IC with the small dot on one corner at the upper right, which is pin 1, and place it to the left of the black pill across the split area of the breadboard. That way pins 1 through 4 are separated from pins 5 through 8. Now let's hook up the power wires. In this example, the red line will be plus 3.3 volts and the blue line will be ground. The dongle, or USB connections, will provide power to the black pill board, and the black pill can pass 3.3 volts on to the other components. Make a connection from the black pill board's 3.3 volt pin to the breadboard positive power rail. Make sure you do not connect the 5 volt pin up. That is on the outer corner. 5 volts could damage the DAC module if you have it hooked up to USB power. Connect the 3.3 volt power rail up to the VIN pin on the DAC module. Then connect ground from the DAC module to the ground rail. Next connect ground to the black pill board. Pin number 8 on the 6N137IC will connect to 3.3 volts. Pin 5 will connect to ground. Now place the 10K resistor from pin 8 to pin 6 on the IC chip. Be sure to clip the leads down so the resistor can lay down flush against the breadboard. Next grab the diode. There's a stripe on one end. Face the stripe towards the black pill board so it can be placed on the IC chip's pin number 2 and the other end on pin 3. Again, trim the leads so it will lay flush against the breadboard. Now we're going to take the 220 ohm resistor and place one end on the IC chip's pin number 2 and the other end over to the side. We don't want the other end to connect up to any of the IC pins. The outer end of the resistor will be pin 4 on the MIDI connector and the IC's pin number 3 will connect to pin 5 on the MIDI connector. Next we'll connect the wires. To speed things up, I already have all the wires hooked up. First we have a wire going from the IC's pin 6 to the black pill board's pin A3. Then hook up the black pill board's A4 to the DAC module's LCK pin. A5 is going to hook up to 
BCK. Skip A6 and connect A7 to DIN. The last connection for the DAC module is SCK to ground. The UDA 1334A digital analog converter is hooked up nearly identical to the PCM 5102A. A4 is connected to WSEL for word select. A5 is connected to BCLK for bit clock. And A7 is connected to DIN with this wire that runs underneath the board right here. And S clock is not hooked up to ground at all. So as you can see, it's very easy to go from this one to this one. Make sure that you are hooking your 3.3 volts up to 3V0 on the board and not the VIN pin. When we hook up the MIDI jacks wires, we'll connect pin 4 to this end of the 220 ohm resistor and pin 5 from the jack will go in here. And to give an idea where those jack pins are, pin 5 is this pin and pin 4 is this pin. When you look at the jack from the front, the pins are reversed. These are pins 4 and 5. These are the only two pins we need to hook up. Next, we'll solder wires up to the jack so we can hook it up to the breadboard. Take a couple of different colored wires. I suggest using 22 gauge wire because it will fit in the small holes on the jack pins. Pinning the ends of the wires can prevent them from fraying on you while you're trying to put them through the pinholes. Then I make a small hook on the end of the wires to make a more secure connection. When I solder the wires onto pins 4 and 5, I make sure not to place too much solder, but enough to not only solder the wire on, but also to fill the pins hole up entirely so the wire is less likely to disconnect later on. Keeping some tension on the wire while the solder cools down keeps it held against the pin's metal. You don't want it floating around in the hole while it cools. Now do the other wire. Be sure to tin the other end of the wires up too. This will help them from fraying when you connect them to the breadboard. Now you can connect the jacks pin 4 to the end of the 220 ohm resistor and pin 5 to the IC's pin 3. Next we'll hook up the dongle. We'll be connecting the dongle using these DuPont female connector wires. The dongle is labeled. We're after SWDIO, ground, SWCLK, and 3.3 volts. On the Black Pills ST link connectors, we're going to connect to ground on the outside, 3.3 volts on the other outer side, SWCLK hooks up next to ground, and next to the 3.3 volts is where you'll hook up SWDIO. In this example, I will use green for ground, orange for 3.3 volts, yellow for SWDIO, and blue for SWCLK. So on the dongle, I'll hook up SWCLK, SWDIO, ground, and 3.3 volts. Again, pay attention to the label on the dongle. Not all of them are labeled the same way. To help keep track of the pins, the label will show a tab on the rectangle. That tab is this opening right here. On the other end, we need to line up the connectors so ground is on one outer side with SWCLK next to it, and 3.3 volts is on the other outer side with SWDIO next to it. 
To keep them together, I used a small amount of electrical tape wrapped around them. I used just enough to wrap the tape around about one and a half times and leave about three millimeters of exposed plastic on the ends. Now connect it up to the black pill board. Be sure ground is going to ground and 3.3 volts is going to 3.3 volts and the SWCLK and SWDIO are matching as well. You'll probably have to bend the connector pins up at an angle slightly so the connectors will slide on fully. Now slide the connector onto the pins. For a quick check, I will connect the dongle up to a power bank. This black pill board should already have a small blinky program flashed to it, and here you can see the little red LED is flashing. You can press this user button and it should turn the LED off. Pressing again and it begins to flash again. Over here is the NRST reset button. Hold it down and the LED stops. Release it and it begins to flash again. This reset button can be used to reboot the BP synth if it ever locks up on you. Notice the DAC module has a small LED lit indicating it is getting power. Check the 6N137IC chip for any excessive heat. If it is hot, you probably have a short. Otherwise, you should be ready to hook up a MIDI keyboard using a MIDI cable. And to make it easier to connect the dongle to the PC, use a USB extension cable like this. Now you have a completed BP synth ready to flash code into. To flash code to the black pill board via the ST-Link dongle, you will need to use the ST-Link utility app. You can either download it directly from the ST site after you have registered, or use the copy I supplied in the BP Synth Files All zip folder. Here's a video I already made on how to download and install the ST-Link utility app. And I'm logged in. You will have to create a login. Here's the download. Hit accept. You're going to ask me if I want to save this. Okay. Go ahead and open up that folder. And I'm going to go ahead and say extract it all. I'm going to go ahead and extract it right here in the downloads. Click setup. Then I'm going to have some kind of warning. I'll just click more info and run anyway. I'll click yes, next, yes, next, yes install, finish, and then finish. After installing, there should be a shortcut to the app on your desktop. If not, you can locate the app at C Program Files x86, ST Microelectronics, STM32, ST Link Utility, ST Link Utility, STM32, ST Link Utility. Click the app open. You can leave the black pill board in the circuit. Connect the DuPont connectors to the black pill board and then plug your dongle into a USB port. You should hear the usual chime. In the app, click Target. Connect. If the app recommends you to update the firmware on the dongle, you may want to skip it for now. It should work fine without an update. If you do update, you need to disconnect the dongle from the black pill first. If there is a successful connection, you should see some data fill in the window and to the top right corner some device ID information. Click on the Program Verify button. A open window will pop up and you can navigate to your BP Synth Files folder and look for bpsynthstlink.hex. Click on that and click open. A small window will open showing the file path and the file name you are about to flash with. Click start. You will see a green progress bar indicating the transfer of data to the black pill board. When it is done, the window will close itself 
and you will see a message at the bottom of the app window declaring the memory was programmed in about 3 seconds and the verification is OK. Your black pill board is now ready to use. In order to flash the code into the black pill board via USB-C, you need to first either download the app from the ST site itself, but you will have to register and log in in order to download from the site. Or you can use the copy in the BP Synth Files All zip folder and run the Defuse Demo setup. Now I'm not going to completely install this because I already have it on my machine, but when this is done installing, it's going to place this in C, Program Files, x86, STM Microelectronics, Software, Defuse version 3.0.6, bin, and the file will be called Defuse Demo. And to simplify things, I made a copy of it and placed it on my desktop here. Here's bin. And here's Defuse Demo. I'm going to click on that. And here's the Defuse Demo app. Next, you want to completely remove the black pill board from the circuit. Plug a USB C cable into your PC. Then, on the black pill board, hold down Boot Zero and plug the USB C into the black pill board. Your PC should chime that it is recognized. In the Defuse demo, you should see in Available DFU Devices, STM Device in DFU mode. Next, click Choose in Upgrade or Verify Action. Find your BP Synth files and find this file right here BP Synth Defuse Hex.DFU. Click on that and click Open. You should see the file name under Upgrade or Verify Action, and now you should be able to click upgrade. In this dialog box, it's pointing out that it's impossible to make sure this file is correct for the device, but asks you if you want to continue however. Click yes. First it erases the chip, then it downloads the code to the chip, and then it verifies that the upgrade was successful. You can now disconnect the black pill board from the USB-C cable and return it to the circuit it is now flashed with the code and ready for use. If everything has gone well, you should be ready to move on to the next video where we'll hook up the BP Synth up to a MIDI keyboard, power it up, and test it. Should you have problems getting it to work, you may need to do some troubleshooting. Check for a link below that will take you to a video that can help you see if you have a bad connection causing your problems. See you in the next video.